commentary booth where we watch and you guess it commentate on the week that was in movies and tvs i can talk um clearly this is what happens when i'm tired and don't have enough caffeine i'm your uh favorite international host karina and um i'm joined by our normal host jamie apps who lists his favorite tv show as south park and his favorite movie of the current week is gonna be um uh, Cinderella. That's what we're going with today. Cinderella is going to be your new favorite movie. Yeah. How, how's it going? Never watched it. The fuck? No, I'm talking about the cartoon. Not like the live action one. Oh, for fuck's sake. So am I. God damn it. We'll find you a new favorite she, movie. She loses the shoe and then eventually she finds the shoe. That's enough. Oh my god, I'm fucking, never mind. We'll find a different movie for you later on. It's cool, whatever. Um, how's it going over across the pond? Because clearly it's pretty wet over here and it's driving me bonkers. It is. I also missed my straw. Yep. You feel, you, I don't know why you pointed that out, but okay. Um, it's not too bad. <laughs> oh, Ash is choking. Jesus Christ. No, no I'm good. <clears throat> it's good here. <laughs> It's shockingly warm for September and windy, which is fun. We've already had three bushfires. I mean, we have like, I think three more storms in the tropics that are like heading towards Florida. So we had two bushfires and it was still winter. That's not right. Yeah, that's pretty fucking, that's pretty (laughs) crazy. I mean, we just have like shit weather and school shootings. So yeah. Also global (laughs) warming, not a thing apparently. No, definitely not. No. No, Not yeah. when you're having bushfires in the middle of winter. Okay. Nah, fake news. <laughs> it's gonna be our new reporting. Um. Anyway, we are we are collaborating again for a a scream wool. Is that a word? I'm gonna make it a word because it's spooky season, and I tried to Stop. make that a thing. Stop making <laughs> up words. The film industry is already doing enough of that. It's fine. Um, so we're here to review uh, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and no, I'm not going to say it three times because, well, you know what happens. <laughs> That's right, guys. Uh, we get to dive into the sequel uh, to the 1991 film, I think is when it came out. I don't remember. 90s, early 90s, late 80s, something like that. Yeah, oh, 88? Really? Oh. I was close. I couldn't remember. I was reading so much crap online that like, I just kind of got all my years mixed up. It was in the good years, you know, before everything went to shit. I said that last week. It's as old as me. That's why I'd never watched it before. Yeah. Well, you're fucking ancient. So I didn't want to put this movie in the same category as you, but you know. (laughs) Sorry, I saw this one before you, so suck it. You saw it like two days before me. Go fuck off. Also, shout out to Holly, my work bestie, who was like, bitch, you're coming to the movies with me and um, got Chloe and I to go see Beetlejuice two days before it released. So woohoo to that. We weren't cool enough to get like a cool screening or whatever, like you were, but whatever. I got a cool screening and a bag of makeup. I win. I I got like a two day, you know advance on everybody else around here but you know what i didn't get a 30 dollar popcorn bucket that was disappointing i got I don't you, know if y'all get like i got you stuff. a double goodie bag of makeup come yeah farm that's not <laughs> that is not a sandworm popcorn bucket i have a mini sandworm at my makeup station and it holds my beetlejuice makeup brushes and he is like yay big and you know what would have gone great a sandworm that's like yay big that would be a popcorn bucket and it would be fantastic. And yeah, well, I would have named him Bob. Beetlejuice makeup to add to it. So calm down. That's, that's true. That is very true. So I'll take it. Anywho. So yeah. Um, first thoughts, first impressions before we dive into the sequel. Do you want to explain what the sequel is first? No. You didn't give this. Am I allowed to? Movie. Are you we doing do spoilers the... on this episode? You can do the basic synopsis. Okay, um, so this is the sequel <laughs> to the original Beetlejuice movie. We find uh, Lydia Dietz uh, coming back uh, with Anna Ryder and Catherine O'Hara as Delia Dietz, her stepmom. And then we have uh, Jenna Ortega joining the cast as Astrid Dietz, who is Lydia's daughter. 
Um, they go back to their original town um, because a tragedy has happened in the family. And, uh, you know, Beetlejuice gets back up to no good because Astrid gets herself in a little bit of trouble. And he surprisingly saves the day this time around instead of causing complete chaos. <laughs> yeah, he is different to the original. The original one, he was a yeah. chaos agent. In this one, he's trying to help. But he's also, he's only trying to help for his own benefit. Yeah, yeah. Beetlejuice has some some fun pastimes, and um, we get a little deeper dive into a little bit of his history, if you want to say that. Um, we also have some more new colorful characters to add to the cast, um, such as Willem Dafoe, who plays a deceased actor who is stuck in his police detective role, which is... Mm -hmm. Kind of a fun bone. I liked him in this. I feel like he was Juno. Like he was this version of Juno, um, who was the old lady who helped the Maitlands in the original movie. Yeah, um, I think he was probably unnecessary. That that's my I big liked takeaway. Him. I thought this was a fun movie. Like it was very much funnier than the original. I thought um, mm -hmm. very funny, particularly like the the dad jokes and stuff like that. Um, probably didn't need some of the characters that we had. Okay. Like, I just think a lot of the side characters were underdeveloped, like, and their stories kind of just went nowhere. Like, okay. Like, the Willem Dafoe character, he's there, but we didn't really need him. Um, his real only big moment is at the end when he arrests Beetlejuice. It's like... That could have just been. Purpose, that could have just been any random afterlife security police guy. Didn't have to have a full story throughout the film. Um, and the Dolores character, they build her up as this great big bad, and then she's just <sighs> killed off instantly. So at the end. It's like, oh, cool. I, was, I will. I I will agree with you. Um, I was really hyped to see this character develop, especially because a lot of the trailers have her as such an important role, or it seems like it's leading to her. She's a very important character. Um, and unfortunately, like you do get her backstory, but it is kind of not all there. And it's more Beetlejuice's kind of, backstory anyway. It is. She's kind of just like a side counterpart in there. And to me the way that they portrayed her in the in the trailers that she was actually going to be the villain in this movie and she was not um really she she was kind of like a side villain and i just i was so excited for it and then i kind of just kind of got disappointed um her demise was super disappointing um that could have been way better she didn't really have a whole lot of screen time I think maybe out of this entire almost what two hour movie she was in there for maybe 20 minutes <laughs> mm-hmm yeah, like they build, her up, they build her up, build her up as this big bad that's just like going around sucking the life out of everyone. Mm -hmm. And you think, okay, cool, we're going to get this like big epic showdown at the end. And we do mm -hmm. get a showdown, but it's kind of just immediately she's wiped out by Beetlejuice. It's like, oh, okay, that was, yeah. why was he so scared? And I appreciate, like, I really loved how they introduced her. Like, her her initial, like, uh, it, like introduction was so fun and, like, so creative, the way that they did her, like, they, they produced this. Um, and her first victim was a really fun cameo as well, which I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. But it was, like, she had this great buildup and then just, she, yeah, it was just, ugh, whatever. But... Like I didn't the, like let me down. <laughs> the Danny DeVito cameo is all the Willem mm -hmm. Dafoe cameo had to be at the end. You could have kicked it off with the Danny DeVito cameo at the start and then capped it off at the end with holy shit, that's Willem Dafoe. He didn't need to be yeah, I, in the movie because all of his I parts throughout that. the movie kind of go nowhere. It's just him that's being yeah. like the dude. I don't know. I kind of liked him, but I feel like, yeah, you are right. He wasn't 100% necessary. He could have been a great cameo and just been like, oh, you know, we found her. Oh, we didn't find her kind of thing. But yeah, I yeah. don't know. <laughs> but like other, other than that, I thought this was very entertaining. Um, yeah. It improved on the original. Um, 
I think the story was awesome. Like the yes. the, the main thread, the the Dietz's mm -hmm. story, they were. Yes. It's their movie. It's not really a Beetlejuice movie. He's kind of just a catalyst to get some of the afterlife stuff happening. Um, yeah. But yeah, Winona Ryder and Jenna Ortega and Catherine O'Hara. They're all three of those ladies. Brilliant in this. Mm hmm. I love Catherine O'Hara. She can do no wrong. I mean, she's she's the mom in Shit's Creek, which is one of my favorite shows too. And her character is just so she reminds me of that same mom but i love how outrageous she is and and just out of this world she kind of is and out of touch um winona Ryder, like she's fantastic she got right back into the swing of things as lydia she still kind of feels like that depressed like teenager um throughout the film and it makes like sense that. when you're constantly seeing ghosts and dead people yeah yeah that's a, a fun little additive i didn't know how i was gonna feel about that when they were going down that route but it wasn't overpowering the storyline it was just a nice little bonus that they put in there um to kind of give her character a little bit more umph jenna or Tega is fantastic and they picked a really great duo for a mother-daughter duo um mm -hmm. they had great on-screen chemistry um they complemented each other well and she really held her own in her own scenes, especially with her character's side story that also happened because there is no one main plot in this film. I feel I feel like it's just like you said, a bunch of mini plots that are all intertwined together and somehow end up meshing at the very end. Yeah, they all end up in the same place. Like mm -hmm. Winona has her storyline of the dealing with the trauma of, oh shit, is Beetlejuice back? I think Beetlejuice is yes. I'm freaking out about that. Whilst also my new boyfriend is trying to marry me at a funeral. Weird. Ugh. And then that was cringe. <laughs> Catherine O'Hara's character is dealing with the loss of her husband. Yes. Um, and then Jenna is dealing with, I hate this place. I just want to try and live a normal life, but it's really hard when my father has passed away. But then my mother is also a famous psychic medium ghost hunter on tv yeah um i love that she has her in her phone as alleged mother yeah it's i mean i saw that and i was like almost as crazy. I'm always gonna change karina's name in her phone uh so, so no uh, not a lot of people knew this before but now y'all are gonna know um, my child is not chloe in my phone she is spawn in my phone um it's how she comes up she's been that way since she got a fucking phone and she absolutely hates me for it and every time she's in my car and she goes through my call log she goes why am i still spawn and i go because it's <laughs> true mm -hmm. <laughs> um so yes i feel like this will eventually be something that she probably changes my name to <laughs> yep so yeah i thought that was cool i liked that this movie, like I said, it builds on the first one and it has a lot of callbacks to that first one. Like the opening scene is the flyover of Winter River um, mm -hmm. and the, the model, which now features the Maitland's crash car in the river. Yes. I was like, oh, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. That's a bit dark. Um, I love it. A lot of the songs from the original return and then we get the big song and dance number as well. And then the Maitland's shockingly don't appear and right. but they they give a great explanation as to why that they they found a loophole so they were actually able to move on i was like oh, that's cool i was gonna ask you how you felt about that explanation of them not coming back i i was really happy with it i thought it was a great little like tie into that just to finish their story yeah i'm glad that they did reference it and didn't just be like mm -hmm. oh we're at this house where they were apparently stuck yeah but we're never gonna see them that would have been weird so at least they mm -hmm. gave that explanation of lydia helped them to get out of here and move on yeah yep, yep. i also understand why jeffrey jones wasn't brought back to play charles deets oh because i he's currently oh, registered yeah. as a sex offender and has retired oh is he really because of it. yikes I did not know that. So to that be fair, they gave Charles a great send off. <laughs> yeah. So that's definitely why they didn't bring him back to reprise the role, but it also explains why they designed the character the way they did. Yes. 
hundred percent. So they can still have um, the Charles character, but they don't have to bring the actor back. Yes, I was like, the way that they they I didn't did that. Think of that at the time, but it makes sense when I read that mm -hmm. he's currently a sex offender. So I was like, oh, that makes sense now. Yeah, I didn't dive that deep into why he was not in this film, and I'm kind of glad I didn't because that would have just. Uh, yeah, I, did, I didn't read what, what, why he's listed as that, but I just saw that and I was like, that, that explains it. Yeah, they are very creative with um, Charles no longer being around in this film. Um, I, I think Chloe and I probably died laughing so hard during certain sequences revolving around Charles' death, which I'm not going to say anything about because it's just too fun to mention especially with the way that they tie it in throughout the movie um, i hated the plane crash that they showed why i just i hated it i was like why it, no this animation looks dumb it's fine it was like claymation slash not quite but all the way because of the charles jeffrey jones situation I now, you can't really i get why they animated it yes I, like, I kind of oh, liked it though because it was quirky just like uh when you're going through when you're going through Beetlejuice's backstory with Dolores that is also another very strange sequence that happens in the movie and it almost took me out of the film I I will be honest that was probably the one part that actually almost took me out of the whole movie um but I like, I, I like that okay. more than I liked the, the plane crash no way i did not i was not a fan was like a silent film i was like oh that's cool mm. Mm. And i love agree to disagree <laughs> i loved charles's headstone though yes yes like, oh i'm God. not of it was fantastic that's when chloe and i lost it <laughs> of course they got a shark fin shaped headstone i was like jesus christ that's on the nose <laughs> yeah chloe and i lost it during that we lost it during the um funeral ceremony with the choir with the choir <laughs> <laughs> yeah a whole Ridiculous. choir singing at the funeral i was like Ugh. yeah i've had that song stuck yeah, in my was... head for the last three days though which is annoying oh good 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 you should just I keep wake i keep waking up with that song in my head i'm like oh what the f no go away <laughs> that's fantastic i love it um that's awesome <laughs> i'm not mad about that at all it did its job um and then, yeah, yeah, this movie was the crazy. The proposal at the wake was a bit intense. Much? Yeah, it was a very. This is why I hate situation. people that do public proposals. Yes. Because it's yes. just. Don't, don't put, put you someone on spot, in that. You can't say don't no. put someone in that situation where they can't say no. Like that's just rude. Yeah, because you feel like if you say if you're the person that's getting proposed to and you say no, you feel like a dick. For like turning somebody down in front of all these people, yeah. but then you're like super uncomfortable. Yeah, like nobody wants that on their conscience. Yeah. Uh, what yes, did you think about the cockroaches? Fun. So, when I watch Beetlejuice, and when I think of Beetlejuice, I do not see armored bandits. I see beetles, like stink bug beetles. Um, that is what I try to envision. I periodically shut my eyes through this movie with certain scenes because they were just really there and I was not a fan. Um, some of them were enlarged in certain sequences towards the end when certain things are happening and I was not okay. Mm -hmm. I kept I kept itching around um, and I just, mm, can we not talk, can we move on? Because I don't want to talk about it. It's as soon as they popped up the first time, I was like, oh, no, Karina is not going to enjoy this. Mm -mm. No, no. Mm -mm. It wasn't as bad as, like, certain movies that I've come across without warning. Um, like, The Nun 2, for instance, you had given me fair warning about that film and what happens, and I closed my eyes the entire that entire sequence in that film. Um, so, yeah, I just... I. If I can yeah. avoid it, I will close my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't really warn you in this one because they pop up a few times. I was like, Ugh, can't have well, yeah, and it just, it comes because it comes with the territory. Like, 
To be fair, in the original Beetlejuice, there is a giant one just sitting on a fucking lounge chair or like lawn chair in the fucking cemetery. Mm -hmm. But because that one is made out of like clay and I can associate it as like a claymation thing, it doesn't hit me as hard. (laughs) Yeah, these ones are are tiny. Realistic looking. Yeah. Okay, we're moving on because I can't. I can't. Mm -mm. Nope. Um, The dad jokes were cool though. (laughs) Dad jokes were on point. Super Karina. I loved it. Charlie's one. I'm never... Charlie's one got me. What, what, what? When he goes to the, he goes up to the receptionist lady and um, he's, she tells him, I just get a number, take a seat. He says, anybody got a oh. bit Panadol? I'm feeling a little bit lightheaded. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my God. I also just like how he's like sitting next to like a surfer and like the surfer is like half there. Yeah, it's but, like, like had a big chunk, like they match each chunk other. out of his side. Yeah, like, oh, that's sad. This is fantastic. Um, and then I, I loved, loved the, that at the end to the influencers that are invited to the wedding. Mm-hmm. Get sucked how they get, into like, their phones. In. I was like, that's a great commentary on influencer culture. It was. Yeah, that was fantastic. I loved it. I don't know if you guys had it like at the screening, but we had it before the movie started where you could scan the QR code and put yourself in the afterlife. Um, I did not do that. I saw the QR but, code on the screen, but I didn't know what it was and I didn't do it. I was like, mm. Yeah, by the time I realized it, I was like, it was too late. Um, but it looked like really fun. Like it just put you essentially like in the Beetlejuice background and stuff like that, I think. But it was a like fun interactive thing that they had. For the audience are you a trading card collector or a fan of australian pro wrestling if so you're not going to want to miss out on the limited edition australian wrestling cards each set includes 50 packs of 10 cards including some of the country's top wrestling talents like robbie eagles shane haste madison eagles hartley jackson and they have shaza mckenzie listed although she is not a favorite uh, the velocities and a lot more there's wrestlers referees announcers commentators that are featured giving you a full appreciation of the Australian independent scene. The cards sold out a lot faster because cards are hot right now, as I'm sure Jeremy Lambert will tell you. But you can order your Australian wrestling cards now at Perio Magazine. That's P-A-R-I-O magazine.com.au slash A-U-S-W-R-E-S cards. Follow Australian wrestling cards on social media at Aus Cards for updates. Join the hundreds of fans who have already discovered the excitement of Australian wrestling cards. That was really fun. I was really glad to see Bob. Everybody's talking about the Bobs. Quite a few Bobs. Quite a few, but they're not all Bob. Some of them are Chuck and some of them are Bob. (laughs) And they all have different, like generic, very generic names. And I fucking love it. (laughs) The actual Bob has a cool, he's got a much more defined character this time. He's very goofy. Yeah. And I I love- Very expressive too, for someone that has like, a mouth his sewn mouth shut. Sewn shut. <laughs> yeah. I like his Beetlejuice suit. He looks like a fantastic little Beetlejuice. Um, mm-hmm. It was a great idea. <laughs> um, yeah, that was fun. Um, Astrid's character development with her, um, her little love interest was a really fun little uh, entrance for her into the laugh after life. And that was, I feel like that was probably the main story was just kind of, saving her from her own uh bad choices (laughs) yeah and i thought the way that they developed jeremy's character that was really cool because it was it even when they go up to his room and he has the book of the recently deceased i was like okay cool didn't think anything Mm -hmm. of it and then as it developed i was like holy that's a cool little more drop here's the info like oh yeah didn't see that coming I also thought it was, I loved it. Um, they did it in such a great way, especially with like um, the small introductions to his parents and stuff like that, but not yeah, in, quite seeing his parents. <laughs> in hindsight, I'm like, oh yeah, it was obvious. Why didn't I pick it up? But at the time, right. like, oh, whatever, it's like awkward kid doesn't really want to have to introduce this girl to his parents. That makes sense. Yeah. He just really <laughs> and then, goes, hey mom, hey dad. <laughs> and then you look back and you go, that's right. Yeah, makes sense. Um, it also made me question though why Astrid could see them all. Because she 
has the same abilities as her mother. I know, <laughs> but they never alluded to that before. <laughs> yeah, they never alluded to that before. And so it makes you wonder like, oh, okay. So she did get that from her mom kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I love that. I like Astrid finding her dad um, and being kind of reunited with him. I don't know how you felt about that, but I thought the little, his little like um, accessories, <laughs> that's what I was going to call them. Accessories were really fun the way that they did that. Yeah, the the makeup and stuff throughout this is very cartoonish. Like his is outlandish with the actual tail wagging mm-hmm. fish. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and then the Willem Dafoe characters is also very cartoonish. I was like, it, I guess it makes sense for the Beetlejuice property because, mm-hmm. like, that first one was very sort of campy cartoon style with the, yeah the physical props and stuff and then this one like the brain stuff was like it it's not trying to go for that illusion of that's real it is very sort of overblown caricatures of this sort of stuff was like "Eh, that's cool it reminded me of um with willem dafoe's character it really reminded me of um tommy lee jones as two-faced in batman Mm -hmm. and how like his was like purplish kind of and stuff like that and like very um exaggerated um so yeah that's compared what to the was like. true face from the nolan batmans mm-hmm. it's very different yeah mm-hmm. so it was definitely a tim burton very very tim burton film um the the sets were really fun um they went back and filmed the outside sequences for this movie i found out back in the same area where they filmed the original <laughs> which was really cool um so i thought that was really a fun little nod to to the original as well and then like you were talking about the sandworm earlier with your popcorn bucket i thought the sandworm looked better this time it still looked doofy and (laughs) silly but i liked it better cg than practical effect I don't know. I'm in different, but I think it's just because I have such a, a fond love for the original and the fact that it was like claymation and like all stop motion for back in the day. Um, not that I'm against, uh, you know, enhanced effects and stuff like that and progress, but I don't know. I kind of prefer the original one still. It still looked great though. It was fantastic. I love that it got its moment still and that there was a sandworm in it because it wouldn't have been a Beetlejuice movie without one. <laughs> you probably just gave him a bit more flexibility like the in that final sequence where it like jumps up and swoops down mm-hmm. probably couldn't have done that if it was practical effect it would have been much harder yeah. much more expensive so to just do it this yes. way was a lot easier for them i think and Absolutely. then <clears throat> the other character that's introduced baby beetlejuice what a little freak Dude, let me tell you something. So Spirit Halloween has been popping up all over the damn place around here because it is the damn season. Um, and they've had like little baby dolls like that that look that eerie for years, but they've never been in a Beetlejuice suit. And I've always wanted one just for like outside purposes. And um, that thing is terrifying. It's like nightmare fuel. <laughs> Especially the final sequence Absolutely where it pops out. Like, oh, God. <laughs> yes. That was not not fun um jenna ortega um definitely i feel she um embodied her wednesday character with her dance moves in the uh in the final little bit it was really funny also Catherine o'hara putting on her dance moves too was fantastic i mm-hmm. absolutely love her <laughs> that whole end sequence uh musical note was really fun um the 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 whole thing was just really fun for me um it was like a strange musical rom-com that just didn't know what the hell it was doing (laughs) again classic tim burton bit of everything thrown into the mix and then smooshed together to come up with tim burton one but yeah like we said last um, week (laughs) this this did seem like there was a bit of oversight he didn't go too wackadoo like it was right it had moments where I was like, okay, this is just ridiculous and silly, but it was yeah. ridiculous and silly in a way that still made sense with the story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Michael Keaton too, like props to Michael Keaton for still being able to like 
act exactly the same and still pull off Beetlejuice and just not miss a beat with it. Um, he he's expressed multiple times that he has such a great connection with this character, um, and it really shows through in his portrayal from original all the way up to now. Like it's just nothing's really changed. It's like they're one person. <laughs> Even when Anuradha said uh, recently that when she signed on to do Stranger Things. Yeah. The one thing was, if Beetlejuice happens, you have to give me time to go and do it. Yeah. And I knew, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I read that they they weren't going to do it, like Tim Burton wasn't going to do it if Michael Keaton and Winona Rutter didn't sign on for it, something around those lines. Um, they all really wanted to make sure that they had those two original cast members and Catherine O'Hara was like, sign me the fuck up too. Like, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> so... And Tim Burton only decided to do it after directing, I think he did two episodes, two or three episodes of the Wednesday series. Yeah. Once he did those, he was like, oh, there's, there's the character I need. That's the person I need yep. to play this new character to give. Yes. Which, right, the Beetlejuice story. Absolutely. This, um, <laughs> this movie was in like fucking production hell for forever too. Like, this was on, this was off, this was on, this was off. Um, <laughs> this movie had so many different things that almost never had. Like, the movie never almost happened. It was, they had an original script for a sequel. They had two original scripts for a sequel after the first movie came out. Nothing happened. <laughs> then they came back and they're like, oh, hey, let's go ahead and revisit this. Nothing happened. <laughs> like, it was just in, like, pre-production hell forever <laughs> and it just didn't get any easier and then it finally had movement and what was it uh i wrote it down it's like in three days 20, before 20... finished the writer's strike hit yeah i was gonna say it, it had movement in 22 to 23 and then the writer's strike hit and it just this movie was like almost destined to never be made i feel like there was just so many signs that they should just like completely shelve it for forever and they were like yeah fuck it let's, let's keep going with it. what else could happen I'm glad they went with this one though. Like the story that they did end up coming up with was very good. Like it, it built on the storyline. Yeah. It, it was fresh. It wasn't just like we saw with some of the Star Wars remakes and even Alien Romulus. It wasn't just let's kind of just redo what we did and it worked. Like this yes. is a totally new take on the Beetlejuice story. It's not anything we've ever seen before. Yeah, I think like, one of the just um, easily been like, um, Jenna's gonna we're gonna somehow get Jenna Ortega's character to the house, which they do, mm -hmm. and then it could have just been Beetlejuice wants to try and marry her now. Yeah, but thankfully that Absolutely. wasn't the way they went. They gave Jenna and Winona their own separate stories. Yes, one of the um one of the early scripts for the Beetlejuice sequel was Beetlejuice Goes Hawaiian. When I was reading about that, I almost died. I was like, that would have been something interesting to explore. Sounds it sounds like a very campy style, like, you know, grade B kind of movie. Actually, grade yeah, that's C a, at that that's point. A, that's a straight to DVD <laughs> movie, that one. Yeah, um, apparently it was supposed to be that the Deets bought like some resort in Hawaii and it was on a burial ground and Beetlejuice had to save them from some ancient Hawaiian spirit. <laughs> so I was like, that would have been a god awful script to do. Please don't. I'm so glad that never happened. And it would have just felt like a cash grab. Like at least this one has all of those elements touches and calls back like we go back to the original house we go back to the original town we do all of the song mm -hmm. and dance stuff like absolutely it, this definitely feels like it belongs next to the original it's not just oh shit this is a property that we can capitalize on let's do that yes um danny elfman came back for this movie again and i've said it before he always worked with tim burton almost every single burton movie because had danny elfman doing the composing and he never lets me down. He's a fucking wild. Him and Tim Burton are like literally two peas in a pod. I swear they're the same person. Just one does music and one does fucking movies because they both look equally as crazy. <laughs> On the um, sound side of things, there is there was one thing that annoyed the crap out of me. What was that? So Lydia drives a Tesla. 
Oh. <laughs> I think I know what you're getting. Have you sh heard a Tesla drive past you? Yeah, it sounds like a little spaceship. Yeah, but they're pretty quiet. They don't sound like a fucking RC car, which this one clearly had an added electric car sound every time it drove by. I was like, oh, that, stop it. They yeah, I mean, to be of all the electric cars that I've been around, the Tesla is the most quiet. Like that one sounds more like the like hybrid versus an entire electric car. Like that's what the hybrids more like sound like. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, it was quite annoying. Every time she came to like come to a stop, it was like, mm -hmm. 100%. Was like, yeah, when she stops outside that house, I was like, oh, no, that was that was the most egregious point. I was like, um, they don't sound like that. Like no. A, I've almost been run over by Tesla's because they're fucking silent. <laughs> yes. Yes. If you're not watching, um, they will run you down and you won't even hear them coming. Nope. The other um fun little uh added bonus character that I think was really cool in this was the um the daughter of the original realtor from the original movie is now in this movie with her daughter. They also dress exactly alike. And she is also anxious to sell their house. <laughs> Not um, sell the, the other house. Oh, no, the... Yeah, the Dietz's yeah, house. The Dietz's house, as well as the other house. Yeah, because, it, well, they want to sell the Dietz house because, obviously, it's the ghost house, as they've labeled it in the entire town. Um, but I just found that so funny that they were able to just, like, add that in there, just, like, in the original. Um, also, her Halloween costume idea for the Girl Scouts or whatever the fuck she's in charge of. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> fruit salad like okay yeah her and rory need to get together with his fucking carrot mus sticks muesli bars and carrot sticks as halloween treats like what are you doing dude nothing brings me down more than rory at trick-or-treat in charge of giving out trick-or-treating candy like <laughs> my no favorite one wants fucking the, carrot sticks. the kids where he's like on a system one each and they steal the whole thing they're gonna be very disappointed kids when they get back and realize yeah. what they stole i was gonna be like <laughs> and I get home and look at it and be like, the fuck, it's fruit and carrots. I want this. Yeah, who the, who the fuck agreed to that? You carried this also, nowadays, around all night and this is all I got. I want this. Nowadays, too, like, nobody would pre pack like, no one's going to let their kids eat packet, like, handmade packaged little, like, carrot sticks and apple bags. Like, yeah. it's just going to scream drugs or, like, other things. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, nope. I thought the priest was fun too. Yeah, he was kind of a weird. I didn't know what to do with him. Um, he was I weird, feel like but it was he, funny. Yeah, like I wanted to know more about him. Like he seemed like he had a connection to to them somehow, but didn't really. And then he kind of just like skedaddled when everything went to shit. And I was just like, "What is going on with you, dude?" <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so then a couple of spoilery bits. Um, if we ever get a third one, which I heard Tim Burton say, probably unlikely because this one took 30 years. If we take another 30 years to do another one, I'll be a hundred and something. And I was like, that's probably fair. Everyone will be dead. <laughs> um, on that front though, there is definitely one character that I guess she could come back as a ghost, but she's not coming back as a, a live human being. Oh, yes. Um, our dearly departed, um, Delia. <laughs> she does get her, her moment, though, with her beloved Charles. They do get reunited, which is beautiful. But that poor woman got scammed, and I felt so bad for her. Like, she's mm. a dumbass. She is, but still, she's buy poisonous scammed. snakes off the internet. Whatever. I just like how she finally, it took all that time and for her to die to honestly like connect with Lydia and just be like, re like pretty much like extract revenge for me kind of thing. And I love how, I love how Astrid's just like, oh, look, all your work's going to go up in value. And she goes, oh, never mind then. No, that's just, okay. It's fine that I died and got bitten by snakes. Fine. Yeah. 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 Um, I did love that she was just so helpless. Like, no, wait, what are you talking about? I'm not dead. I'm not. Mm -mm, no, <laughs> this, is, this is not real. It was like her worst nightmare come true. <laughs> is there a manager I can speak to? No, shut up. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, I'm very important. I'm very Stop important. It. I'm very important. <laughs> yep. 
shut up. You you fucked up. Don't don't <sighs> buy poisonous it. snakes and hold them in front of your face. Uh, she was trying to she was trying to find closure. That was this this whole thing. <clears throat> um. Also, their house being draped in all black, like it's in mourning, was fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. Astrid tried to warn her about the snakes. She did. Yeah. She was like. She was like. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I don't think that's what they meant in Egyptian culture. They were kind of chaos and death. Don't, don't do that. You think? <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. I was fun. I enjoyed that. It was also a nice way of like, if by chance they ever did decide to do a third one, which personally speaking, I hope they don't. Um, I'm really happy with the way that they did it. Um, and the fact that we only have two, cause also I feel like Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice would kind of just be a bit much for a movie title and it would kind of just be like an expected kind of thing at that point. Um, yeah, I think they'd have to change our, the naming convention. Yeah, and it just wouldn't work as well. Like, I don't think that they could they could do it, but if they were Especially to do with it, the whole least, like, you know, conceit of how he comes to be. Right. So then name the so, movie that would defeat the purpose. Right. There would be a lot of random things. And again, like Tim Burton said, with how long it took to fucking do this one, who knows? And whatever. But I mean, Delia has had her send off. So really, we're just left with Lydia and Astrid for the most part. And, you know, I'd be even, happy with just that. I like the way they ended it. <laughs> even Beetlejuice kind of got ended as well. Yeah. Okay, like kind of. He let just him went off. rest and he's gone. But mm -hmm. they do to suggest mm, maybe he's not so gone. I don't know. I don't know. I really, well, I'm happy with the way that they ended it as it just being the way it is and that being the end of the, the franchise. Yeah. But Lydia has that nightmare at the end where you're like, mm, maybe, maybe not. Maybe he may not. Yeah. Not that was really fun gone. though. Like when it was going through that whole sequence, I was like, oh my God, what the hell is happening? Holy shit. And it was like, just this like, is, this is fast. <laughs> the hell um yeah that was that was really fun i enjoyed it um there's nothing crazy that i didn't super enjoy other than like the little bit parts that i explained um but budget wise this movie is had a massive budget um numbers haven't come out yet obviously for box office because it doesn't release technically until after this episode or until after we're done recording today but <laughs> um i have a feeling that it'll probably do really well. I think it had something around a hundred million dollar budget, which mm -hmm. is absolutely obscene. Um, at least for me, because I just feel like that's just so massive for for this movie. I feel like that was a massive budget because it's, it's not big, like this has like a ton of crap. <laughs> big jump from the last one, I think. Yeah, I don't. Well, different time periods too, I guess. But oh, yeah, the last um, one was only fifteen mil. <laughs> Yeah, and like I said, there's nothing like massively crazy. Like there's not massive sets in this movie. It's just like on set in Vermont and then like a couple of sequences here and some CGI there, but it wasn't like anything too extravagant, like on the level of something like like Alien or Star Wars or anything like that. So a hundred million dollars is a lot of a budget. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, uh, inflation too, but like CG is pretty expensive and there was mm. there was a decent amount of it. Like the sand world looks way better. The sand worm would have taken a fair bit. Um, that's pretty much it. Most of the other stuff I guess, is practical. The the snakes. Yeah, minus the when they're um when they're sliding into like the afterlife, like when Lydia and Rory go and like yeah, go into that. the model. There's that. So there's that stuff, which is mm -hmm. fine. I imagine a lot of this budget is in the, the cast though. Yeah, I mean, because I can't imagine Michael Keaton is cheap these no. days. Catherine O'Hara is probably not insanely expensive, but again, not you're not getting it for a million dollars. No, and Jenna Ortega is like the newest. Like, Jenna Ortega thing that and Winona Ryder are two of the hottest stars at the moment. Like they would have been a pretty penny. And then uh, yeah, Tim Burton doesn't come cheap either. So. Yeah, plus, I mean, the costumes are probably not the cheapest either. Um, it's the same costume designer. I forget her damn name now. Um, but she uh, she was just at the ceremony because Tim Burton finally got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Um, 
much deserved, I think, um, which is fantastic. And yeah, the whole cast of Beetlejuice for the most part was there. Um, it was really fun to see that actually happen before the movie got released. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, there's not a lot of cheap actors in this movie. <laughs> so that's like what, that is where probably the budget went. Even like Willem Dafoe would have been. Mm-hmm. Obviously not super expensive because it's not a leading role, but still not an insignificant amount of money. Money to veto, they probably got pretty cheap. Probably could just... Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's probably just those people have worked with Tim Burton before, so they're probably just like, hell yeah, we'll come back and we'll probably just do it for like, yeah. I mean, fuck. Mates, right. Danny DeVito could have done that for free at this point because he was in it for such a minimal amount of time. And, <laughs> you know. And it was such a fun character too, like a janitor that yeah. committed suicide by drinking bleach Drano or varnish or whatever or something. it is yeah yeah that was uh that was pretty gnarly <laughs> but yeah and this is also longer too like this is 105 minutes up from the 88 of the original so yeah also like you said times have shifted and that's about average now for um film nowadays we usually they run a little over an hour and a half two hours almost yeah um it's yeah average. and what hour an hour and 45 is pretty standard it's not not outrageously long, but not short either. It's pretty normal. Mm -mm. But yeah, I, I yeah. enjoyed it. I thought this was really fun. Yeah. Um, early reviews have it sitting at a 63 on Metacritic and a 77 on Rotten Tomatoes. So um, clearly people are, are liking it already. Um, you know, I just think, I think it'll yeah, do great. We could have tightened it up a bit. Like we didn't need so much of the Willem Dafoe character, so much of um that Dolores character I would have yeah I would have honestly I would have sacrificed the Willem Dafoe character for more of Dolores and more of her like terror like reigning terror mm -hmm. on people and hunt for Beetlejuice yeah like we didn't really need the cop character we could have just had Beetlejuice fight her and that be the mm -hmm. resolution and yeah then with Astrid outsmarting Beetlejuice with the contract yes that would have been enough we didn't need the mm -hmm. superfluous character of the cop so <clears throat> yeah he was yeah. he was a fun bonus but yeah i would have sacrificed him for more of dolores just because she was so hyped up in the trailer um but i mean but yeah knows. other than that it was super entertaining super funny mm -hmm. constantly laughing throughout um yeah yeah fantastic think, i don't so, think there was any like jump scares or anything mm -mm. No, not I really. Think... There was just your average, like, him popping up randomly, like, hey, how's it going? How's it yeah. going? What's that? Definitely not <laughs> creepy. Like, and, like, still a little sexual, but no, it much. Nowhere near as pervy. <laughs> May, way turned back from the OG. This is way more kid friendly. Yeah. And I feel like they probably had to adapt with the times because, like, that's just not really accepted that, you know, a grown ass yeah. man is in love with, like, a teenager <laughs> and yeah. trying to marry her. In the 80s, you got away with showing kids some real fucked up shit and traumatizing children. Yes. These days, I mean, as people, don't, <laughs> people don't really vibe with that. And traumatize no, I think kids. The, the funniest thing, I think, was that he still had, like, a picture of, like, Lydia from when she was, like, 16 on his, like, office desk just staring at her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Pretty cool. But, yeah, it was fun. Um, all right. What, what, what are you rating Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice? I gave this a three out of five. Okay. Similar to the original, like fun movie, but yeah, like I said, there's those few characters I would have sacrificed to just tighten it up a bit. Wasn't a fan of like that animated part. Some of the mm -hmm. makeup, like the cartoony vibe of the makeup was a little bit too cartoony for me. Mm -hmm. Entertaining I, um... is all I can say. Like it was super entertaining. Like I wasn't disappointed to go and see it at the cinema. Um, yeah, I wouldn't rush to go to the cinema to see it. Like, if you're not a big Beetlejuice fan, you can probably sure. just wait till it comes on. Okay, okay. Um, I gave it a four, but it's for nostalgia purposes, pretty much. Um, I loved the campy animation in it because it just reminded me of kind of the original a little bit. It's also classic Tim Burton. Um, I'm always gonna like his style of doing weird, quirky shit and adding 
cartoonish kind of things and very campy kind of things into it. But again, yeah, there were there were things that I didn't like about it. Like you said, underdeveloped characters and overdeveloped characters are in there. Um, so I probably would have done a little alterations with those. But other than that, it's pretty fun and solid. It's a fun ride. Um, you know, I if you're a Beetlejuice fan, you're going to, I think you'll be really happy with it. Um, I'd be shocked if a lot of people were not pleased with it. Um, other than the couple little things that we pointed out. Yeah. Like and, it's, um, yeah. it's a pretty safe sequel. Like that, mm -hmm. the main story thread doesn't really go anywhere too crazy and unexpected. It's all, like I said, safe, like what you would expect from it. But mm -hmm. that, that main thread of, Lydia and Astrid's story. That's yeah. really solid. That that's the yeah. Key. And those those three ladies, like I said, are uh, shows down. They're all great in their own moments. Absolutely. And also I would say that, you know, it's been such a weird, weird thing to try and like classify movies that have come out um as requels, sequels, reboots, things like that. This is definitely, in my opinion, a sequel to the original. It's not a reboot of the original. It's got its own storyline, but it still falls in place with the original by bringing those original casts into it. So I don't, I, I'm glad that it's not a reboot. I'm glad that it's not a carbon copy of the original. Um, it's, it's just a really fun overall kind of adventure that just continued. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I guess guess that's it for this week. And Jamie's going to give you the rest of the shit because, yeah, clearly I don't remember any of that because I can't remember my own stupid handle on any social media platforms. Alrighty. Thank you for listening to the commentary booth. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on podcast services and on YouTube. You can follow Karina on Instagram at Miss Karina Renee, and you can follow me on social media at Jamie Media and at Perio Magazine. Commentary Booth is a fan-funded production of Jamie Abs Media. You can support the podcast alongside our magazine, Perio Magazine, on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Jamie Abs Media. The following people supported at the publisher level or higher, and you cannot fathom how incredibly appreciative we are for their support. Mm -hmm.